All right, anytime now, he'll join us on Facebook Live. This conversation. All right, Alistair, are you there? Can you hear me? Yes, I am hearing you. Are you hearing um, me? Yes, absolutely. Like we were wondering, you know, <laughs> already our little pressure started to rise. No, just kidding. Just joking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But thank you so very much, sir, for um, spending the time um, with us. No doubt this is a very important conversation. And so we want to um, share this conversation with our viewers this time around. Okay? All right, Alistair. I'm excited. I'm thrilled to be here. It's an honor You're being on. It's an honor being on with you. Always view your programs and the way you share. I admire the way you change up things. You, you're, you're a true personification of cre a creator. Well, thank you, sir. Because you, you, you just get an idea and you just go run with it. Thank you. Thank you very much. You know, media... That, that industry that is media has always been my passion. And so I am only presenting what is within me. Okay, so thank you for your encouragement. It means a lot. That's okay. Your, that's your purpose, that's your calling. Thank you, thank you so much, I appreciate. So Alistair Amaja, how are you navigating the COVID-19 pandemic at the moment? Well, um, first of all, I'm obeying the protocols. And it's tough, but just find ways to adapt. You know, life is about adapting, you know. And even from March, even March last year when this really hit Grenada, um, first it was stressful, but at the end of the day for me, it was a bit exciting because it's new ground. So let's let's try something new. Let's live a new life. Let's see where it takes us. And even with the club, so well, I want to jump the gun, but just saying, even with the club and a lot of our operations at Team Lyrical Inc., COVID hasn't stopped us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, COVID that's good. That's so you continue to press on? Of course. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just make How would you make sense? In. Yes, there's a bit of delay for some reason. How would you make sense of the impact of COVID-19 on your life and livelihood? How do I? I like that question. <laughs> it... First of all, like I said, the beginning COVID, it was very stressful and anxious, very. I, COVID hit in the climax of my studies at MCC. Yeah, at my climax, when mm -hmm. I was final, final semester, well, my so-called final semester, majors, and literature, psychology, all the courses, everything were coming at me. And then, boom, COVID. It was very tough, but like I said, I adapted. I adapted. I, and adapting is, is me right now. I live, because in life, if you don't adapt, is either you're broken or you die. You must adapt. Life is about adapting. So COVID on the on the hand is teaching us how to adapt mm. because our life is about life is about change, mm. and mm. you're not. We can't live a good life if we're not adapting. We can't. That's what life is about. Yes. Yes, yes. I agree. I totally agree. We, we, we must position ourselves to adapt to changes around us because, of course, the goings on are real. Okay? All right. Uh, Alistair, the Prime Minister in his national address, which announced changes to the emergency powers COVID-19 regulations, said that health 
experts have advised the government of Grenada that the nation must learn to live with COVID-19 going forward. Your reaction to that statement? Based on the experts and the government, um, I find factors circling that is a bit ticklish. And I'm going to explain why ticklish. We as a society, when you do your research, we as a society, we at times as Grenadians, we xenophobic when it comes to change. We have a problem with change. We are a part of a society that I like to call what I call the one one cent mindset. Mm. One cent in the sense is like, based on how we thinking and behave is one way, one way of doing things, one way of seeing things, right? And knowing our culture and our society, to say something like that over the air, um, I understand why he said it, but still I would question because as, as a leader, certain things you're, can see is either you just do it instead of saying because you know people tend to misconstrue your point and in order for we to make it through this new normal so to speak we must adhere to the protocols yes i know it's tough we must adhere but the experts, understanding with the experts and, and, and basically the, the scientists, the doc in the, in the medical field, the doctors, the psychologists, because mental health is a serious issue within this time. And being a social science student, yeah, majored in psychology, I can tell a little about that because even with no movement and in quarantine is how much we could do home how it how something may affect you it may affect me differently what you may be able to handle can or i won't be able to handle it because we're wired different and mm -hmm. because we wire different we behave and think different right so i understand the approach because even regarding the, the, the four no movement weekends. It was tough. And again, it's based on how you're wired psychologically, mentally. Can you handle it? How is home? The, 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 the environment home. So when we, when we, when we as we look at the factors based on our society and how we as a society operate, it's a bit ticklish. Some persons have a problem with change. Some persons have a problem with adapting, but, but, but the, old, the, the, the elder head, sorry, right? How can they mitigate through this? What is the government doing to curb the pressure and the anxieties? Because, I mean, everybody going through something now with this COVID, everybody balling out. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Alistair, you're known to be outspoken, candid, and very matter of fact. How, though, did your involvement in drama begin? Hmm. My involvement in drama began in church and primary school i told people the first thing i started doing first preschool church primary school was singing singing i did before that sorry that was the first thing i did i was a singer as a child sang a lot of songs however that led me into performing because singing is performing, yeah? But drama, 
started in church as well and primary school. And when I started acting, it's like, this is me. No, this is me. Not that I, 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 I didn't love it. I, I love it, yes, but it was like I came alive. When I began acting and looking at televisions, preferably watching a lot of movies as a child, a lot, a lot of movies, Stallone, Chuck Norris, Anna Schwarzenegger. Well, when I said Chuck Norris, yeah, huge fans, Will Smith, Denzel, but at the time, oh, Stallone and Chuck Norris, Jackie Chan, Chet Lee. I started visualizing myself as an actor, as a movie maker. I didn't know you happened, but I I began imagining and, and visualizing. I on the stage, I performing, I acting, and I remember being a. By the way, I went to Heimsey, oh, St. Yeah? George's Anglican Junior School. Right, big up Mr. Digale, big up the teachers and them right now. Big up, big up yourself. If if you're on and you went Heimsey, big up your whole self. <laughs> big up your whole self, right? Now, right there, I was given an opportunity. I, I remember, I can never forget this, never. My first major production, my first major production started in Heinz. And let me tell you how we started. I was a part of Miss Antwine's class at the time. That was 2000 and Miss Ursula Antwine. Hold on, I'm taking oh. my time. I'm busy. I'm taking my time. <laughs> Yeah, you know I ain't warm yet. <laughs> Sorry, I ain't warm yet. <laughs> right, I just let him go. Right, when I started in 60p, that was after Ivan. After Ivan, somewhere around there. Can't remember, but somewhere around there. Yeah, after Ivan. And yes, it was after Ivan because I, I, I Ivan the job at that time was after Ivan. I, 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 I. Mm -hmm. Right. And I, with a few members of the class, 60P they call it at the time, we had independence concerts. So we got on stage and we put on a, a production. No script. Everything was impromptu. I played grandpa. The first time I played grandpa was in Heinz Z, not in the Thai speech. And Mr. Digil, everybody was looking on. Mr. Richardson, everybody was looking on. Uh, the issue was Kenroy. It was not recorded. Oh. Kenroy, it was not A master performance. I'm, I'm, I'm oh. telling you. I, 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 you know me, I don't like to big up myself. Mm -hmm. You know me, I don't like to big up myself. Personally, you know me. Right? And I don't like to big up myself. And that performance we put on, I called it a laugh at all. Half of 60p was on the stage. Heinze, like literally shut down. First time, no, normally when you have things like that going on, Miss Antoine always walking, eh? If you know Miss Antoine, she always doing something. Mm -hmm. When laugh at all was going on, Miss Antoine put down her pen push back her chair and just start to prattle. Downstairs came upstairs. Who was walking came in and they were their eyes were fixated on the stage and we took it away. We took it away. After that production, Mr. Richardson walked up to me. He watched me in my eye. He shook my hand. He took me by Mr. Deagle, Nigel Deagle. That time, his brother was alive. Tomb that was going. Yes, yes. Michael, he the girl. Me, Michael, right. He took Jose. He took me to him and he said, get that man in. Get this child involved with you. Get him involved with you in Tomb that. But due to technicalities and children cannot be on stage at that time. It never happened. Mm. He came and he was like, get this. I'm telling you, me, act, I performed, and I rallied. 
and none of us was experienced none but we put on a show we were on that stage close to half an hour a teacher didn't move stage manager didn't move the coordinator didn't move and say time that what i like about it. they give us an opportunity and we took it away and listen to me the production we did that two parts eh? mm. after okay. that after that deep within i knew this is me wow okay wow so what about drama connects with your being after heinze after heinze i went happy in secondary school i just mm -hmm. building a point right it connects to being right i performed I sang, I performed in Happy Hill, but not much, more singing again. Mm -hmm. And I came across Roger Williams. Mm -hmm. Oh, right. Right? Frenchy. Frenchy, that's right. French. And I performed in Happy Hill. Yes, we did a short film in Happy Hill at the time, through his exams and stuff. Mm -hmm. and after happy hill for five years i experienced what i called a drought a drought mostly no performing maybe one or two small things in church and i cried out to god i say lord i want to act this is those five years i never felt myself depressed battling with depression and at the time people you, you said I, I'm expressive, candid, and so on. I became that. Mm. Yeah, I became that. But before mm -hmm. I was shy and kept everything on the inside mm. to bring the point home. When I did English A the first time in Happy New Secondary School, I never got it. I got a five. Went back my second year, I did it. Nothing. I got a four. Nothing. But I'm determined. Can I? If I tell you, I go into the moon. Can I? I go into the moon. I don't care when. I don't care how. I am going to the moon. And 2011, I made up my mind, I get in this English. Because I know the importance of an education. Never got it. I tried 2013, I tried 2014, I didn't get it. And at that time, I did not know who I am. I didn't honest, understand self as a young man. I didn't know that. But I never gave up on the dream and late 2015 i remember kenwell he died kenwell prince mm -hmm. or what what do you call his name mm -hmm. i want to get his name wrong yes prince kenwell right prince kenwell mm -hmm. yes he mm -hmm. came on and he spoke if he had dreams and he was playing sonica please don't let it go that's my alarm every morning please don't let it go that's my alarm and late december 2015 i met roger williams frenchy i started greening the, the name of the school has changed believe to roger acting academy right. sorry i may not get it right but before it was grenada acting and film school yes, so i joined I, I recall that grenada acting and film school right grenada acting and film school and when i when i started the training and the acting and the performing and a bomb went off a bomb an explosion like a volcano boom poetry started flowing and lyrically inclined were bought it so I was not always lyrically inclined. I became 
lyrically inclined. 2017, I got English A. Mm. The arts made me so vocal and so expressive. I kept a lot of personal things bottled up on the inside for years. Mm -hmm. Issues, pain, problems. People see me and it's like, all is well. You know, know me 15, 14, 15. When we first met, all is well, but all was not, all was not well. But the arts became a channel in performing, in my journals, in my writing, right? The, 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 the arts made me express it. Once upon a time, I was shy. Yes, I had a thing for talking and communicating, but that if you knew me and we were good. And yes, I talked a lot in primary school and secondary school. Yes, I did. But when it come, when it came to issues and problems and, and, and so forth and addressing matters, in other words, I was not confrontational. Mm -hmm. That's why I said I wow. kept things on the inside. If you mash me, I ain't gonna see nothing. But today, if you mash me, hello. Ow. <laughs> You're something. Right? Like let me let, <sighs> let me take that again. Let me take that again, because I'm getting passionate. Yes, back then I was not confrontational. Confrontational. Take a time, Alistair. Take a time, Alistair. Mm -hmm. I I will not. People said, "Oh, you're brave. Oh, you're." And enough times, my confidence get me in trouble, but that's me. Hello, and I ain't changing for nobody. Amen. <laughs> yeah. You're something like I else. said, this is me being authentic. Mm. And because of the arts, the arts, the mm -hmm. arts, I, I don't understand how people could look down on the arts. I don't understand how we as a society cannot appreciate the arts. I'm, listen to me. The same, we may watch the artists and some of the artists and their backgrounds and, and, and believe that they're slow, they're dance they they they're not wealthy they're not together but if you do your own research and you immerse yourself within the arts hello that's power you know? that's serious power but the system the system is so structured in a way that persons in the arts are not only appreciated but not valued right here in Grenada yeah, and we'll talk all, a lot about that, no doubt, as the conversation um, rolls on. If you're just tuning in, you're watching Ken Rubichis Live Evening Edition. This is Grenada, brought to you in association with Viking Engineering Company, Grenada Limited, Grandins Valley, St. George. Of course, they are heat, ventilation, air condition, and refrigeration engineers and contractors. Yeah, not forgetting, of course, uh, in association with Caracou Building Supplies, yeah, located literally Harveyville, Caracou. You can, of course, find quality aggregates, sand, cement, gravel for your residential and commercial purposes. 443-7015. My guest is Alistair Madda. He's the founder and director of Team Lyrical Inc. He is live with me as part of Ken Rubichis Live this time around. All right, so what I want to ask you now, um, what is Team Lyrical and how did it come about? Okay. Okay. No, I'll, I'll basically continue on the path. Mm. I'll continue on the path to, to put everything together. Verbally, okay. I'm the constructor and the builder tonight. We All already right, put the puzzle foundation. together. <laughs> we already laid a foundation. So I'm ready to chop my blocks. <laughs> <sighs> right? Mm -hmm. I'm ready to chop my blocks. So going back to my involvement in acting school, foundation we did it. So I still on the foundation before I chop my blocks. So let me okay. cement it. Let me cast it now, right? Let me deck it. You understand? Cover that decking properly. Now, in acting school, the writing, the journal, and the performing, I spent two years and a half in acting school. And then I wanted more. 
I want it more general. Mm. Desire. So I made a tough decision. I left acting school, right? And in leaving acting school, I decided, okay, now I have the English, Tam mm -hmm. CC. Tam CC, that's what I was waiting for. Tam CC. So one step, one phase, bam. The goal, general studies, literature, and psychology. When then? First year, complete recall. First mm. semester, I do much. Complete. But because of my foundation, I'm, I'm a decking. Because my decking was already set. Tam CC with the blocks. Hello. Mm. Anybody with me? Tam CC where I throwing up the blocks. Right? Mm. And started literature, psychology, and for semester, I got one or two opportunities to perform. Small thing, eh? Small thing. Mm. And right there, I remember, yes, first week, I hit them in. Um, one, two, three. I'm strong. Student affairs, yes. I hit them with a piece in student affairs. Everybody was like, wow. You know, like fresh from the oven, fresh out of acting school. Boom. Bomb drop. <laughs> and then opportunities came. Second, now I ain't launched out fully yet eh, because I'm still doing my recon. Mm -hmm. And in my first semester, one of my ideas for film came to me. And we'll go tie that. So we ask, we we be talking about team lyricaling. Second semester, I was getting ready to launch out. By my second year in Tam CC, everybody knew who I was. Was very calculated. Everybody knew who Alistair was. Everybody knew what I was doing at the time. Second semester, Tam CC best talent. Had mentors and, and, and trainers in the ass working along with me at the time. Ricardo Kings Douglas, Miss, well, I get to know Miss Martin, true Greeny, that best talent, Janice Martin. Mm. And she saw me perform one of my pieces and we clicked, we connected. After Tam CC best talent, because of one error, we, we, I went and do drama, but we didn't put on the name. We, we didn't sign up as a group. So we didn't place. But the performance we did was, everybody enjoyed it. But because of a technicality, we didn't place. After that, 2020, few persons I do drama with. Also, I was act, I was president of the drama club in Tam CC, vice president of the writers club in Tam CC as well. So all of that was the initiation and February, when we met mm. to do drama, a few of us, they said, Alistair, why not create your own group, right? And train us, teach us why you know. Let me do drama and stuff with you. I said, I mind it, but you know, Grenadians and how we lack commitment and so on, not professionals. Listen, run this on a commitment. We started, let me do a WhatsApp group. And February the 28th of 2020, that was the beginning of Team Lyricalic. Right? Hmm. Right there, we started with a group of us. A few poets, actors, you know, a few of us. March, when COVID-19 occurred, everything went on. After we finished studies between April and May, we had online meetings. And our first production, if you go up on my YouTube channel, you're going to see, type in my name, Alistair Amada, Alistair with two L's, A-M-A-D-A. -A -A. You would bounce up our first production called Chester Reminder. Right? Okay. And after that, we performed online in a 
talent extravaganza, right? Now, I tying things together because COVID-19 helped us, was an opportunity for not only the button of Team Lyrical Inc., but preparing us and molding us as a club and a group. And today, where we act as, as, as a group and organization, I'm humbled based on the, the members I have working with me and productions and stuff we, 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 we did, we're doing, and we plan to do. 